Hey folks, it's three o'clock and it's Tuesday. That means it's Tech Tuesday. Today I am going to be showing you a demonstration of some new features as part of our correlation group and our Doxis Proactive Network Maintenance Software. Don't know what that is. I'll explain it all in just a second. Be right back. Hey there, thanks for joining me. Rick Yuzi here with Tech Tuesday. So um, it's very important right now for cable operators to be improving their cable plant. They're trying to compete with fiber in various areas uh, where they have customers and they've got competition now maybe coming in there or they want to prevent competition from getting a leg up on them. So they're trying to make sure that they can increase their speeds and increase their reliability because one of the things about fiber, it's very reliable. And you know, cable operators have been adding more fiber to their network. It's called HFC or hybrid fiber coax. They're trying to extend fiber out to the customers as much as possible, but they still have coax cable out there connecting the customers because it's a very expensive proposition to just tear all of that out and put in fiber all the way to the curb or all the way to the, to the customer. So uh, most of them are doing what they can to get the most out of their HFC plant. Um, and again, part of that's going fiber deep, but also, like I say, they need to really look at ways that they can improve the the uh, the efficiency of their maintenance and be able to find problems and fix them faster and preferably find problems before customers start calling to complain. And that's what proactive network maintenance is. Uh, there's something called DOCSIS, proactive network maintenance, or you'll hear it called PNM. And that is the ability to actually see what's going on in the cable plant and go out and uh, methodically do maintenance in areas that you know are, are going to be getting bad and, and fixing those before customers are actually seeing any impact from that particular issue. So we're going to look at that today. And one of the reasons that I'm doing that is we, we have a DOCSIS Proactive Network Maintenance tool, and we have recently uh, made a change. We've, we've constantly upgrading this, so we, we made some updates recently, and the correlation group has some cool little features in there now that I wanted to show. Uh, so I'll explain some of what these things are, correlation groups, those kinds of things. Uh, but first, you know, here's the dashboard. So you can see uh, you've got cable modem trends over time, daily modem status, uh, Spectrum impaired modems, that would be modems where you can actually see the downstream spectrum. So the, all of the modems uh, are full band capture, meaning that they can show you what the downstream spectrum signal looks like at the home. So you don't need to ride out to the home with a meter. You can see it right there. Uh, cable modem status over time, you know, if there's serious changes, you'd see those here as far as uh, online and offline. Uh, critical modem action list, these would be the, the individual modems that you want to go target first. And really, that's a good way to start. Um, is to look at individual modems because that's where most problems are in the cable plant. Uh, they tend to be places where the cable company does not do as much maintenance. They're not out there at the drop doing maintenance all the time. They're certainly not in the customer's home seeing if there's a loose connector or if there's a bent piece of cable. They're just, they don't have time for that. And that's where a lot of problems will show up with uh, signal quality issues, noise, ingress, because they're, like I say, there's loose connectors maybe at, at the at the home or somewhere in the home or near the home. So this is generally where you want to start, but there's also correlation groups where you've got uh, modems that are all being impaired by the same problems. Those would be problems that are out in the mainline plant where you've got something like maybe a squirrel chew and uh, you're getting water in the cable or radial cracks in the cable, a bend in the cable, or you've got a physical problem like a connector problem. Maybe there's corrosion or a loose connector somewhere out in the mainline plant. And that's causing problems. And when that happens, it doesn't just impact one device uh, from the standpoint of the uh, of something like a micro reflection. It's going to impact multiple devices. And that's where you can tackle lots of modems at once. It's still it's still a good idea to start with your individual bad modems because that gets a lot of that uh, noise, uh, so to speak, out of out of the uh, correlation groups because you can then see the common problems easier if you don't have modems that have got a lot of individual problems in that group. So I was going to look at a correlation group and show some of the new features. So I was going to pull this one up. I was looking at it earlier. This looked like a good one. So uh, the map will start to load the modems and then the correlation group's going to load since that's what I clicked on there. So uh, one of the things that we've added is this uh, little blue dotted line that kind of shows you where we're saying you should be, the correlation group is. It's not, it's not always exact because what we're doing is we're looking at an algorithm, algorithm looks at all the modem signals and it tries to determine which ones are um, kind of transmitting the same kind of signal. And sometimes it's going to be 
close, but you got to have a cutoff. So some modems sometimes will not be in a correlation group when they're still part of that group. Sometimes you might have a modem that is, um, you know, there might be one out here that really should be in the group. So we'll look at that as we go through this. But first, I thought I need to explain some basics here if, if you're new to Doxis PNM. So uh, part one of the reasons we call our software here pre-equalization pre analyzer is because it's kind of the core basis of Doxis PNM is something called pre-equalization. There's other things that are in PNM, you know, like again, getting the full band capture information, the downstream spectrum information, but uh, pre-equalization is kind of a core concept that uh, allows you to view the impaired modems. And what's going on here is um, there, there are, the way that this works, the way the pre-EQ works is you've got a CMTS, um, your cable modem termination system, basically your, your piece of equipment that's in the head end, and then you've got your cable modems out in the field. The CMTS and the cable modems are transmitting signals back and forth on the upstream and the downstream. And if the CMTS, when it sees a signal, if it sees that it's, um, that it's in bad shape, uh, it might have a lot of tilt in one direction or something along, you know, kind of some waves in there, it can actually tell the cable modem to adjust its signal, to pre-distort the signal so that when it does that, the signal looks better to the CMTS. So for example, if the signal is tilted a lot in one direction, it'll tell the cable modem, hey, uh, could you send me the, your signal tilted in the other direction? Basically it tells them send the inverse signal that I'm seeing. And that will help flatten out the signal then when the cable, when the uh, CMTS gets it. So what that does, what that means is that you can have a really bad signal that's heading upstream to the CMTS, but after pre-EQ happens, you can get like a five to 10 dB improvement in MER. That's kind of like your signal to noise ratio. So you can get that immediate improvement by just turning uh, pre-EQ on in the CMTS. So that's a setting in the, that CMTS has had where you can turn that setting on. So you can have it on or off, but if you turn it on, it will then allow the cable modems to uh, adjust their signal to overcome these impairments or these, let's say, micro reflections that you might see in the plant. So uh, at that point, again, you've got this flat signal. Now, that doesn't mean that the, the issue is corrected. It just means that the signal looks a lot better. So this customer, suddenly who might have had been having a bad experience, suddenly their experience is fine because the CMTS is seeing a nice clean signal, even though it's not. It doesn't fix the cause of the problem. So again, there still could be a, a it's still something out there, like a, uh, again, a loose connector, a corroded connector, a uh, bad piece of cable. And generally what's happening there is, again, something like a micro reflection. So for example, you may have out in this hardline plant, maybe you've got a connector that's gotten corroded. And as the signal passes through that, most of the signal goes through as it's coming upstream, most of the signal comes through and goes towards the CMTS, but because there is, let's say, a corroded connector, maybe there's some moisture in there, something like that, part of that signal will bounce back downstream, and it's going to bump into something that's not going to let it go any further, like an active, like an amplifier that's only supposed to send data in one direction. So let's say that bounces back, hits the amplifier. The amplifier is going to say, nope, and it's going to bounce it back upstream. It's going to hit the impairment, the, the bad connector. Most of that's going to go back through to the CMTS, but part of that's going to bounce back. So you get this micro reflection. So you've got this echo cavity, let's say in this case, between a bad connector, like a uh, passive, and then you've got an amplifier, like an active, and you've got the signal bouncing back and forth. So when this is out on the mainline plant, you're going to have lots of modems, what could be a few or several, uh, where you've got the same modems are having to transmit their upstream signal. They're all going to go through this echo cavity. And therefore, when the CMTS get those, gets the signals from those modems, it's going to tell them all to adjust their signal in about the same way. So it's going to tell them, okay, well, pre-distort your signal this way. And because they're all compensating for the same impairment, they're all going to adjust their signal in a very similar way. And that's the beauty of this and being able to determine where you've got groups of modems that are being impacted by the same problem. So what we're looking at here, again, this is kind of our correlation group. All of these modems uh, are transmitting upstream. Let's say it's prob they're probably going in this direction right here. Um, and they're all running through a similar kind of echo cavity. And that could be somewhere in here. It could actually be in here because when I looked at this modem, it probably shouldn't be in this correlation group. So somewhere in here, there's a, there's a length of cable where there's a signal bouncing back and forth, and these are all being impacted by that. What we're looking at here on the right is, uh, are two things that are kind of unique to uh, PNM, proactive network maintenance. 
This top thing is called an uh, in-channel frequency response chart. And what we're looking at here, basically, this is, this is what the signal uh, would look like prior to being pre-equalized or equalized for the, the CMTS. And it's kind of, it's a representation of the flatness of the top of the haystack on the signal. But you can see here, these are all of these modems. You've got a line for each modem. And you can see that a lot of them, most of them, are actually very similar in how they are adjusting their signal. There's a couple of outliers here. The ones that are probably still, it may be still in this group, but there may be something else going on in that modem that, uh, or in that area that is causing it to be not quite as correlated. But certainly these modems are all close together. So the application looks at the, the way the signals are being adjusted, as well as how close the modems are geographically, and then tries to put that all together and say, okay, these are the modems that seem to be impaired in the same way. So that's what this ICFR chart is. And then down here, we've got uh, digital taps. Now, a lot of times when a cable technician or anybody who's familiar with cable technology thinks of a tap, they're thinking of a physical tap. And that would be that uh, you know little silver box that's got uh, you know, connectors on it where you plug your cable in. And you know, it's something that would connect from the drop to the mainline plant. So you've got you know, a tap and you've got cable coming off, going to various homes nearby. And that would be your tap. Well, these are digital taps. These are really not related at all to that. Um, and what digital taps are, this was built into the DOCSIS standard. Originally, there were eight taps, and now it's expanded to 24 taps. And what these taps are, basically little slices of the signal uh, so that you can adjust. This is what allows the cable modem to adjust its signal in various places to be able to compensate, again, for the, the signal issues. So you can think about this, uh, again, this is like an equalizer. You can think about this if you're as old as I am. You may remember when everybody had an, an equalizer in their car, like a car stereo with an equalizer or a home stereo with an equalizer. And it was mostly because it looked cool, right? We didn't know what we were doing, but you know, you could slide the little sliders up and down from bass to treble, and you could adjust the sound in the car. And it really is meant to adjust the frequency of the sound uh, and it's really meant to adjust the frequency so that it sounds good in various environments. So uh, depending on the acoustics of the room or the car, you can adjust more bass and more treble, that kind of thing, or the, or the music that's playing, you can adjust that. So you're adjusting the music frequency. Well, this is very similar. You're adjusting the, the cable modem frequencies at, at these various slices right here. Um, and generally, uh, what you want is all the power going through this tap 8 right here, and everything else should be fairly low and flat. But as the cable modem is making these adjustments, um, it will boost certain parts of this uh, spectrum in order to overcome that. Now, when you see on the left side of this of these taps, that's generally going to indicate group delay, especially when you've got kind of this stepping up like this that's showing that there's group delay, which is kind of a, it's a micro reflection, but a little bit worse, where you've got the, the signals being interpreted by the, the CMTS. They're coming in and they're delayed and it's causing problems. And over here, you've got uh, on this side, you're showing uh, these digital taps out here. And in general, when you see these, the taps very close to tap 8, like tap 9, tap 10, are going to indicate that you've got an in-home problem. And then as you get further out here, you've got a further distance to your echo cavity. So that's generally going to indicate that you've got an outside plant problem because you've got a longer distance that that signal's bouncing back and forth between. So here we see, again, this is a compilation of all the modems, but we see that we do have, um, you know, there's show, a lot of them are showing in-home problems or a shorter um, kind of uh, echo cavity here. It's very possible that there's a short echo, that there's two impairments. There's a shorter one and a longer one. And then there's one modem that's got a very long one right here. And then you can see here, again, these are clustered very close together, but we do have a couple of outliers. And we see this one here, I believe, when we look at it, is going to correspond that this wavy one here is going to correspond to this modem right here that's got this kind of outlier here that's way out here that's saying there's a i looked at this earlier i think it was a thousand foot echo cavity on that particular device so um so that's what that all means and these digital taps again adjusting the signal and this is showing um the signal these are all pre pre being distorted so this is what the cape the cmts saw and would be seeing if pre-equalization was not turned on, but it is turned on. And once it's turned on, I'm going to click right down here. You see we've got a pre-EQ chart, but then we've got a post-EQ chart. In other words, post-equalization, what does it look like? 
And you'll see this is kind of the signal that you would love to get in an ideal world without, let's see, even having pre-EQ turned on. You know, if you were in a lab environment and you had no problems, it might look like this. So you can see all of the, everything's nice and flat here in the very center of the green. You've got all the power here, like I mentioned in tap eight, and you've got fairly flat down here, no issues. This red line is, uh, is to help you sh show you where the threshold would be on some of these things. So as I go back to my pre-EQ chart, you can see a lot of these taps are below the threshold, but we've got one above here. We've got a couple, one or more over there. We've got certainly some over here that are above that. So that's what all of that means. Hopefully that helps. Uh, so back to the correlation group. We're looking at the all of the signals of the correlation group here and down here in the ICFR and on the uh, tap response chart. Um, now this is again is showing me where it thinks the correlation is. And another thing that uh, was added since the last time I showed correlation groups, and by the way, if you look in the description of this video, I've got a couple of links. I've got a link to a video that Tim Smith and I did where we were looking at correlation groups and really going into detail on how you can find where it starts. Because if you can find your, your first bad modem, I should say, what is it? Uh, we're going upstream. So I always get that wrong. First bad modem, last good modem kind of thing. Uh, if you can find that location, then it gives you an idea where to start looking. And then you've got your echo cavity size and it, you can find out where to look. So there's a link to that video in the, in the video description below. There's a link to a blog post that I did where I explained all about PNM, what it is, why you need it. And I talk a lot about the taps and the in-channel frequency response, what pre-EQ is, those kinds of things. I've also got a link to our uh, website where you can find out more about pre-equalization analyzers. So check those things out. Uh, but the last time that I did show um, correlation groups, I did not, we didn't have this nifty little line here kind of showing where things are correlated. And uh, of course, you've got the color difference as well here. But we also now, we can click on any of these and you get a nice little chart down here of this individual modem. Now it's all kind of compacted and you're looking at all three channels, but you can see as you click, so I'm clicked on this one now, I can click here a little further down the line. And you can see they're pretty close. There's slight changes as you do that. Um, these modems down here actually look a little better. Um, but you can see the, the particular correlation group that we're looking at right now is 34 megahertz. So that would be this one here. So we can see as we click through these, there are some changes in that. But like those two that are real close together, they look very similar. And this one here, very similar. Uh, go down here. You see it's a little flatter there. So there's some question as to whether these, how correlated these are and what other, what else might be impacting this. And then I can scroll down here and I can see my digital taps and the same kind of thing as I click through these. So here you see, again, I've got my threshold line and right around here is where I'm seeing something. So I'm not seeing a lot um, on, let's say, a outside plan issue, but I'm seeing some more near home issues right there and there, especially here. So that may be causing some of the the problems with these things looking slightly different. Um, again, I'll click over here to look at the taps here. You see it looks very similar. Uh, I forget where I was, that tap there. You see the taps aren't changing much there. Uh, I noticed that I got a higher tap here on that one, and I don't there. So you can click around. It's a little bit easier than going into the detail on each modem, which you can do. I'll show that in a minute. You can go into the detail on each modem, but this lets you kind of step through right here and try to figure out what's going on. And then I wanted to show also, so uh, I wanted to show this one because this one's right here at the edge of the street. When I click that one, that looks very different. So this is again, is the channel and the correlation group that we're looking at. I say it looks very different. You can see it's up and down a lot more. Um, now, if you look at the general direction of it, it's similar. So it most likely is in the correlation group. You can, again, the direction is very similar in the way things are going. That one's much flatter there. But in general, I would say um, that it, it's probably got other issues, and it actually does have other issues that are causing it to uh, be a slightly different response. And the main one is this right here. So again, if you look over here, this is the modem that we're looking at that's presenting this here, and it's also the modem that is more of an outlier up here. So if I look at it, this one has that big uh, it looks like tap was at tap 21 way up here high and the other modems do not have that as I click on these other modems They don't have that. So again, if I close that down um, 
that is this modem. Which one is it? I believe it's that one there that we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> now, that we're looking at, again, we're looking at 34 megahertz here. Uh, so if I go up here, I can actually clear that out. Or I can, can I just select that? I can just select that. And I can say, let me look at the other channel there, which would be 21 megahertz. Now, if you look over there to the left where the lines are and which modems are blue as part of this correlation group, when I click this other channel or this other frequency, you can see it suddenly decided this is not in the correlation group there because it's a different frequency and that these are not over here as well. So I've got a red modem over here and it, you can see why this modem is red because of the, you know, the, the wide response. It's not quite, we're not seeing it in the red here on this ICFR, but it's obviously got issues. And then you've got some yellow modems over here like that. Uh, again, that when, we're, when I was looking at it, I was like, you know what, this one doesn't look quite as bad. Now, now we're looking at 21, so we're looking at this part of the signal. So that is, which modem am I, am I on there? Um, I'm on the yellow one right here. You can see there's a slight little circle under that. It's hard to see on this yellow, but that tells me, tells me what modem I'm on. I'm on. If I click here, and you can see, again, I'm looking at that um, kind of similar. So they probably are in the correlation group, even though it's not including them. They're not quite the same, but you can see on this particular channel, um, they were, I'm not surprised, I'm, I'm surprised they were in the other one because this one doesn't look like it's correlated there. So again, it's, it's not perfect. This is basically a science and an art. So you, you've got the science here that's telling you, hey, this is what we're seeing. And then you got to have the art of determining uh, where to look. And that's in that video that Tim and I did that, again, there's a link to that below. Uh, so that's what you can do there is look at the two different um, channels just by clicking there. You can also clear them all. And that gives me a view of what these modems are. are they yellow or red? Now I can see it. I can see whether they're yellow or red um, when I click in here anyway, because I can see, um, it tells me right up there, you can see the yellow on that one, and you can see the red on this one. But when it's in a correlation group, all the pins are blue, so you don't have to click on them. You can go ahead and get rid of the correlation group, just take a look at it. You can see I've got a red modem. This one here is red. It's actually two modems there uh, in that particular location. One of them is red. And you can see why it's it's kind of all over the place there compared to the other channel. So back to let me go back to the first correlation group I was looking at right there. So that's everything there. And I can just like I can click here and see what that modem looks like. I can click down here and see what these look like. This is actually you know very different from that one. Um, I can click down here. I've got a yellow modem, and you can see it, it doesn't look that close to what those were, so these would not be in that correlation group. Here I've got a red modem, um, and you can see that's all over the place. So this is obviously an in-home issue. Let's look at the uh, the chart here. So yeah, I've got uh, so a couple of taps that are way over here. This is a tap 9 and tap 10, and again, those 9, nine and 10, especially 9, are going to indicate a shorter echo cavity and generally an in-home issue that you're looking at there. So this is a modem you want to go fix, just go to the house and see what's going on there. Uh, then we've got some green modems nearby. They're going to have a little, you know, they have no nothing over the threshold. And if you look at the frequency response, they look pretty good. Um, so uh, again, I wanted to show that feature of being able to click through these various modems and look at that. And we, as I mentioned, you can also click in and look. Whenever I click on one of these modems, I'll click this one. I can Click up here, whoops, gotta go right there, click more details, and it's gonna open in another tab that particular modem's information, and it shows me it's got, uh, it's in these upstream correlations right here. It's got a cable modem, upstream transmit power. Failed that test as far as it's out of spec there. Um, here I've got my downstream information, so I'm looking at my MER, this green line, I'm looking at my power right here. Uh, this, this, these are all SEQAM channels right there got my individual, this is my individual uh, ICFR and taps for this modem specifically. And you can see it's just barely up to the threshold right there. So it's not in bad shape, uh, but it does have that one issue. And then uh, you can see it, see where it is in the map um, right there. You can scroll in or out. Got, when I use my wheel, it does that because it wants me to zoom in on the map using the, the other scroll. <clears throat> so that's that modem. I can also look at, uh, let's say I'm looking at that modem there. Let's look at this uh, modem here. 
So this one is so different. Uh, go in there, click that. So this one, uh, upstream fail parameters, cable modem, upstream transmit power as well. Also micro reflection level. Uh, it's power, downstream fail parameters, downstream power OFDM. So this is a Doxis uh, 3.1 there, and it's got a wave on the spectrum. Uh, so in this case, I've got my SC QAM channels, and here I've got my uh, OFDM channels right here on the downstream. And then I've got, you can see, again, it's a similar direction, but you can see it's quite different here on this response. And again, this is the modem that has the app that is very elevated out here. So as I look out here, uh, we can look at some details in this table. And here's the micro reflection level on this particular uh, this is the 34 megahertz channel. So we can see that we've got a red there. So the micro reflections are over what they should be out of spec. And here's the transmit power. And then we've got over here, we've got IH and OSP. We used to call this TDR and VTDR in the application, if you're familiar with using it. But um, you know, that, that would be meaningful if you're a cable technician, certainly TDR as being something that you would use, a tool that you would be used out in the outside plant. Um, but we changed that to in-home. In an outside plant, it's a little bit easier to understand. So again, what this is looking at is, do we have an echo cavity that we think is in, an in-home issue? And this is saying no. We have an echo cavity that we think is an outside plant issue. And it's saying, yes, we do. And on both these channels, uh, on 34 and on whatever this one is, uh, 20, oh, this is the 21 here, we've got this 1,000 foot or so echo cavity that is being represented right here by this tap that's way out here. And then we've got, uh, again, our transmit power is not good on any of these. And that would be most likely, you know, obviously from this modem having to compensate for this micro reflection way out here. So it's pretty severe on what it's having to do. But yet, it's still, when I go to the post EQ chart, it's still looking pretty good to the CMTS. So this subscriber at this point, would not be really experiencing a problem. However, again, whatever this is that's going on here is likely to get worse over time. So it would be good to take care of this. It also, you know, if you can do that, then your modems are having, not having to work as hard. Uh, so it's always good to take care of these uh, problems wherever they happen to be. Now, again, I don't know why this is a thousand feet and none of the other modems seem to be seeing this. I don't know if, if that's, maybe there's a really long drop on this modem and maybe it's the only one that's having to run through that. That's certainly possible, but that's something to, that would be something to look for. Um, I was going to look at one other one, I think. Um, let me see here. Whoop. Yeah, I was going, whoops. Okay, i got to zoom back in. When you zoom out, you get your nodes. So I zoomed out, and I've got my nodes, and then I can zoom in, and I get that right there. So let me go back to, I'm going to go back to this correlation group so I know where I was. It's right there, okay. Um, I was going to look at this red modem or a couple of modems over here. So I'll zoom in. So none of these are in the correlation group. Um, I'll close that. I was just going to look at them. Uh, so again, I've got a red modem here. Uh, and I've got some yellow modems around it. So if I just click on that modem, you can see again, that's really out of whack. And you can see why it's definitely in the red. It's you know where the signal is going right here. And then I've got yellow ones right next to it. They all look pretty good. They're just about green. They're not too bad. So they're kind of in that um, warning stage. It's not quite an alert yet, but it's something to keep an eye on. When you get a red modem, it's like, okay, we need to start addressing this. So I'll go ahead and click on more details on this one. And it's saying uh, upstream transmit power, MR micro reflection levels, and ICFR problem, again, because it's in the red uh, power OFDM issue and an adjacency on the spectrum. Uh, again, this got my OFDM channels, my SCQAM channels here. And here you see the pre-EQ charts. So you've got your ICFR and your TAPS. And on this one, you see it's not really showing an outside plant issue to speak of. It's got, it's got a short distance, 83.57 feet. And all of these are very similar, 86.57, 81. Here's a 61. So it's not... That would be probably this, maybe a combination of these two that are, there's nothing out here like that other modem where it would be a long distance. And once again, I can click on the pre-EQ chart and you can see it, it really does. Pre-EQ really does make a tremendous difference 
in the signal. And this is something that uh, you can turn on. You don't need the software to turn that on. I mean, that's something that's in the CMTS. You can turn that on. However, if you turn it on and you don't have this software, then it, a lot of these problems are hidden and you have no way to kind of figure out where, what's going on and where. That's why you really need this software because uh, you can turn on pre-EQ. You can get the, the benefit of this much better signal, even though it doesn't fix the problem, it, it fixes the signal, so to speak, up to a point. But then you can also use that, all of the, uh, all of the information that you're, you can collect from that pre-EQ, from those, uh, what, the way things are being adjusted, and you can then get all of this information in an application and actually go out and fix this stuff. So we can see, again, the tremendous power the pre-EQ has right there. But again, this is what it would look like if it was not turned on, so we have an obvious problem here. And I can look down again in here and see I've got my ICFR where that's out of spec because it's, again, it's way up in here, even here. Then you've got uh, your micro reflection levels. And here's your transmit power again, uh, going to be out of spec right there. And again, here's our in home and our outside plant. Uh, what else do we have? We've got our MER. Um, it's not in this particular mode is not in a correlation group, so you can tell it's not in a correlation group there. This is the node that it's on, node zero, and those kinds of things. So, um, and uh, let's see, this I was actually let's look at the spectrum chart while I'm in here, might as well. So, we again we can look at what um, the spectrum looks like at that modem. So, again, I don't need to take a, a meter out to that modem to see what the downstream spectrum looks like, and this is saying that there's an adjacency right here and we certainly do see something i think going on in there um let's see a drag in there yeah so we see right here we've got this you, you obviously want things nice and flat and then suddenly you've got this channel that's sticking up way here so that's an adjacency that that seeing in that chart um do we have anything else it's saying adjacencies just in general in here but certainly that's that's a spot right there and then uh we can look at History, um, where is that? There's somewhere in here. I haven't looked at this in a while. There's somewhere I can go back in time and look at that. It might not be in this particular chart. It might be later, you know, elsewhere in the application where you can do that. But I'm not going to go into that. I just wanted to show you. you've got the downstream here as well as you drill in on this modem. So, um, all right. So, again, that is what we're looking at here with the correlation groups. The main change is being uh, kind of having the dotted line to kind of help you see. And sometimes, you know, these correlation groups, they can be weak or strong. This one's kind of in between. It's got some very, there's definitely a strong correlation here that you can kind of track where you've definitely got modems that are adjusting their signal the same way. Sometimes it's not nearly as, as strong, and you'll see lots of these lines that are kind of waving all over the place. And when you see that, a lot of times you'll see uh, in the correlation group, you'll see blue flags. Uh, blue pins, but then you'll see red and yellow pins and green pins in there amongst them, meaning that it's really not a good correlation. It's not something to spend your time on. But again, the first place to start uh, to make these correlation groups work better for you is to attack where most of the problems are, and those are the in-home problems. So uh, that's always my recommendation that you get a lot of these in-home in -home problems fixed. And when you do that, then it's easier for the application to correlate the signals because they're then the modems are not adjusting in a couple of different places, like for an in-home problem and an outside plant problem. So that's the first thing to do. And that can have a big, big impact on your upstream as well, because as you fix those upstream problems, then uh, what you're doing actually is you could be um, closing up some places where you could have ingress coming in. So you've got upstream noise coming in at various homes and all of that funnels back to the CMTS. So when you have uh, ingress on the upstream, it's all going to travel upstream back to the CMTS and it accumulates as it goes. So that's going to be impacting customers, even if it's just an individual customer that's got a loose connector on their modem on the side of their house. That can impact that little bit of noise that can get in there, or maybe a lot of noise that can get in there, starts to impact people upstream. And as that accumulates from other homes, it can be a big problem. So you want to go out and fix that, clean up the signal, and then these correlation groups will be even more powerful because it's going to be easier to see the the really tight correlation and to zero in on uh, the echo cavity. And once you get that, once you get the echo cavity, and again, we saw in the chart, it's telling you the outside plant echo cavity distance. Once you know that distance, uh, this application also, you can put in, if you've got digital strand maps, you can put digital strand maps in here. So then you can see right there on the map where your actives and your passives are. Um, 
gives you an idea of, okay, well, let's see, I've got an amplifier over here. My distance is this. Here's my first modem that's bad. Here's my last modem that's good. That's what it would be. Last good modem, first bad modem. And uh, what's in between there that has a distance where that kind of tells you where to look. And again, the, the video with Tim and I kind of walk through that. And uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, this is the software here for the Equalization Analyzer. So uh, you can go to our website. I've got a link to this in the description as well. And you can learn uh, about Doxus PNM. You can check videos out that we've got. We've got various resources in there. If you want a demo of this, we ha we'll be happy to do that. You can even get a free trial if uh, you're qualified and we can set it up and actually can look at it on your network and see how things are going. If you're a cable operator, that can make a huge difference. And I think once you get, see all of the data that you have in here, you'll want to keep that. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining me for Tech Tuesday here. If this was helpful at all, if you didn't know what PNM is, hopefully now you do. And again, check out some of those resources that I have in the, in the video description. Uh, but if you give me a like, I'd appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button, click the bell to be notified when I'm live. And I will be live tomorrow at some point during the day for broadband deployment news. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.